to really just highlight the game changers that are making measurable changes every day. We have enough drama, yeah. enough competition, enough pitting women against each other um, where I want to kind of change that. Is it a big test? Absolutely. Am I willing to take the journey? Absolutely. So without further ado, I see people are starting to join on both platforms. So thank you and um, welcome to the incredible, phenomenal, amazing Miracle Ray. <laughs> I mean, it is what it is. See, this is the thing, right? We have to start learning to give people their props. We got to start learning how to not allow what you see to take you back from being able to celebrate another yeah. woman. Shedding light, giving flowers, giving props does not take away from who you are or what you have or what you're called to do or who you're called to be. We got to get that out of our minds. Sometimes women, we get so scared. Oh, I don't want to share posts. I don't want to, oh, I don't want to. We got to get that out of our minds. That's why we're dealing with beneath your beauty. Yeah to get to some of those issues. Why do we do that? Why do we overlook someone's post? Or why do we be afraid to give yeah. somebody their props? If they're dope, they're dope. Yeah. You can't take nothing away from that. You know, so y'all already know. I, <laughs> I had to share. I had to share that. <laughs> so she is a pastor. She's a community leader. She's a philanthropist. She's a trailblazer in so many other things that we'll get into and we'll talk about. And as I mentioned before, if you don't know her, get to know her. And if you know her, get reacquainted, get re, you know, connected because she's always grown, she's always evolving, she's always changing. So don't put her in a box and say, oh yeah, I knew her from when she preached when she was 16. A lot has changed, a lot has changed in a month. Yeah. A week, a day. Yeah. So don't cap people, don't put people in a box so to who you think they are, who you think you remember them to be. Because if your heart is open to change, you're going to be changing all the time. So get, like I said, connected with her. Um, I know her personally. We'll get into that a little bit later down the line. <laughs> <laughs> but she does have an amazing story to share about her journey, not just even with the titles and the positions that she held, but just as a person, right? We forget about the person, we focus on the titles that people have, and we forget that they're people. Yeah. They're people, right? So she's also going to share some things about some obstacles and challenges that she overcame. And maybe that can be a sense of encouragement to you. As I mentioned before, bring your bag, you hear some jewels, some wisdom jewels being dropped, throw them in your bag. You may not need them today, but you never know. Seasons change, right? And then she'll also mention whatever project she's working on, whatever you have coming up, different things like that. So that's all. Wanted to put that out there to you all. So as I mentioned, thank you again so much um, for being here. You look fabulous. Thank you, as do you. Thank you. Yes. We got the colors going, yes. you know. Yes. <laughs> yes. The is over. Yes. Like, listen, <laughs> who cares? They said it's September. That's right. It's still springtime, okay? Oh, yeah. we just doing what we want to do. Yes. <laughs> yes, yes. So as I mentioned, I'm very honored to have you here today. You. This is absolutely incredible. Um, we go back really far. Yeah. And we'll get into that because I want you all to hear from her more. Um, so we can just actually just really get into it. Um, I know you have such a powerful story. Um, and you sent me your bio. I got on your website you know, for the mission that you have and all that you've done and are doing, that literally just you know, doesn't even encompass everything. You know what I mean? Or you scratch the surface of everything that you do. So I know you got started preaching, right? Mm -hmm. At a very, very young age. So what has that journey been like for you? And was there ever a time you wanted to do something else? Mm, that's a great question. Thank I you. love it. I absolutely <laughs> love it. So, you know, for me, my journey has been one that has brought a lot of self-discovery. I think people look at preachers often and think that their entire development surrounds the pulpit and not really looking at how you change as a leader, you change in your understanding of faith, you change in how and the ways in which God uses you. Mm -hmm. And so for me, if anything, there have and continually are moments where it's not necessarily that I desire to do something else, 
but I desire for there to be various additions that look very different from what I'm doing now. I believe that there's an ability that God has given me to create comfort for people as they're on a journey of self-discovery. And so, plug, if you know Chris Brown or Lil Wayne, um, I really believe that there's this ability to help people understand worth and value and fulfillment outside of wealth, outside of accomplishments. And I do look at people like both of them who've received and continually received certain levels of success, but literally sensing that there's this need for a greater level of fulfillment that happens off the stage. Mm -hmm. And so for me, throughout my life, throughout my journey, I've had really great moments, not with either of those celebrities, but with various people who've been in different heights of their careers, mm -hmm. who've received various levels of success, but lack that fulfillment and being able to be a part of their journey. And so that's been something that I've always wanted to do and, and gratefully and thankfully, graciously, God has given me some opportunities mm -hmm. in the past two years to really go more into being a life fulfillment specialist, nice. really helping people walk in fulfillment um, and understanding the depth of who they've been called to be. That's amazing. So with the, you said it wasn't so much that you wanted to do something different. Yeah. It was more so that you wanted to add absolutely more things. So when you say add, are you is you are you referencing the life achievement that you you know that you're doing now? Or is there other things in addition to that? I would say that those would be that, that area would be the main area that I that I love to continually add. Okay. But I think even in broadening the scope of what that looks like, like even a setting like this, I love the opportunity to be able to really shed light right. on the deep issues of development as a person. And I yes. love how you talked about it's beyond faith, right? Yes. Because there are people who may not be on a journey of faith, mm -hmm. but they wrestle with the truth of what they can accomplish. And by way of me being a believer, of course, the message of the gospel is going to always be the, always. the influence and the undertone and the motivation of what I speak to people, but also helping people understand that God has created us with the internal ability, even while we're not searching for him, there's this internal ability that really pushes us to know identity. And that's why there are people of other faiths and other practices who have found some things that are significant about identity, mm -hmm. because while they may not be searching for Jesus, biblical principles work. Right. Whether you're committed to Jesus, if you're practicing those biblical principles, they work. And so that would be the, the broadening of what it looks like to continually add into what I'm already doing. I think in thinking of that question, so much of my life and so much of what I know of who Miracle is really stems from the foundation of my faith. And so I've never really been in a space to, to want to do something different. If anything, it may have been in my early teenage years when people were going to under 21 clubs, knowing that I couldn't go because at that point I had already preached at 80% right. of the African American dominated churches in the city. Right. And that if I were to roll up, they'd be like, isn't that evangelist? Yeah. So if anything, I remember as a teenager, uh, wishing that I could like, just go to another state, right? Mm -hmm. And like see what it's about, like see what this whole under because it was under 21 clubs, like right. and Jets I and Zoo and, and yes. Club, Club Quake. I know y'all remember <laughs> Club <laughs> Quake, you know, and all of these things. And so it was that. And then of course as I got older, I realized that I actually wasn't missing out on anything and that there were more people who wished that they could have the boldness to impart yes. upon the life that I had been living my whole life versus what I thought I was missing in someone else's. Right. Yeah. I, I mean, that speaks to so many different things, but one thing that you said that really stood out to me was that identity, our, our faith, obviously, is yeah. what we know is rooted and grounded as yeah. believers. Yeah. And for people who are on believers, you know and you understand yeah. where your faith stems from. That's your foundation, right? But you mentioned something, even when you mentioned, you know, Chris Brown, different people, that there's a need to have some type of substance and self-development on what you're known for, beyond Absolutely. what your title is, whether you're a principal or you're a teacher or you're a lawyer, whatever. You know, sometimes people, and I'm sure you've walked through this before, um, are more open to put you in a box yes. to say, yes. this is, you know, you're a preacher, so just preach, yes. right? Yes. You're a teacher, so just teach. Yes. You're a lawyer, so just practice law and not understanding that even with the title and we'll go into self-development and knowing yeah. your purpose that that identity is the common thread absolutely that really connects us all and i love that you mentioned 
your passion of wanting to see people have that self development Absolutely. and have that connection with Absolutely. who they are, regardless of their faith. Absolutely. And I feel for most people in the church, I've been in ministry most of my yeah. life as well, yeah. they miss that part. Absolutely. And yes, a lot of what we do is tied to our faith. However, we have to understand the people who exist outside of those four walls of the church. Absolutely. People you work with, people you go to school with, yeah. may not all have that same faith. How do you bridge the gap yeah. to have that conversation? That's so good. To yeah. say, okay, yeah, I know I'm a Christian and you subscribe to whatever, but you're still a person. Person, yeah, right. You still have a heartbeat. You still have a mind. You still have a life. You still have a story and a, a background. And I think sometimes, because we're speaking on the Christian Absolutely. side, Absolutely. we miss that yeah. because we get so into our titles or ministry or or what the bigger purpose is that we miss people. Yeah, and that's it's so good. We miss people. Mm -hmm. That is such a powerful statement. Thank you. And I mean, it, well, it hit me because I was in the fashion industry for over 16 years. Travel, you know, blessed to do so many things. And I remember times sitting with people, you know, from photographers to, I mean, the most beautiful women you have ever seen, models and different things. And the conversation would come up, that, you know, whether it was about self-esteem or yeah. why they lack confidence or they had a horrible childhood or I don't like wearing dresses because my dad told me I look like a boy in a dress, so I don't wear dresses anymore. You know what I mean? Like, and it started to spark in me, like, okay, I remember being so gung-ho about being a Christian so early on that it would scare people off, right? That first of all, can we just say the gospel is not scary? It's not. If we are scaring people and they're running the opposite it's direction, so good. you know what I mean? And they're running it's under so the chair good. and they're like, oh, she got you know, like, she's on her way, you know? <laughs> they book it, you know? We have to start seeing that. I swear. It's it used so to happen good. to me. At least, oh, what's her name? She got her right little tire in her stomach. She's got me. Right. <laughs> Turn or burn, you know? You went to a Christian college, so you so you know? Yes. It's an inside joke. You went to Christian college, <laughs> trust me, you know how it gets crazy. But it made me start to do self-reflection. Yeah. And say, what am I missing in connecting with people? Yes. Am I just putting on this badge of honor as a Christian and I'm missing the person? I'm missing this person that's hurting or dealing with anxiety or suicidal or identity issues. Where where do I get down to earth to meet the people? Yeah, yeah, and I think that that really comes by way of meeting people where they are. Mm -hmm. I think that when your faith is not the common ground for a person, mm -hmm. then it's important to be interested enough in them yes. to see where does their passion lie. Because mm -hmm. if it's not the same faith as you, they have a passion about something. something. They have a passion in something mm -hmm. that may not look like where your passion comes from, but it's something that drives them. Right. And I think that a part of that is loving people enough Mm -hmm. To make the decision in many ways of what you said to actually see people mm -hmm. so that you don't miss them yes. So that you don't miss the true identity of who a person is by writing them off because they don't believe the same thing that you believe Right, and I think that throughout my years of pastoring out of the country and meeting people who were born into Religious practices that look different than mine because they're born into a country where that is 98% of the religious decision and right. lifestyle practice that it wasn't based on a missionary coming and evangelizing them to be of the Islamic faith or or to be um, a Sikh or things of this nature. They've been born into it. And I believe that in my travels, God taught me the importance of seeing where their passion lies beyond their faith and really talking to people from the perspective of where their motivation lies because what you find out is that there are areas in their life where they lack motivation True. and they can't quite put their finger on, on why they can't like move beyond that ceiling, why that ceiling of success or growth 
or maturity or even forgiveness has not been broken and you realize that it's a part of something within their identity that may not have anything to do with their faith right. but because you've taken time to really get to learn them you're able to hear what they're not saying mm -hmm. and so I think that that's a huge component of really finding the common ground because we've all regardless of our faith we've all had scenarios and, and situations yeah. in our life where we had and have hit those ceilings mm -hmm. and so I think that the most important thing in reaching people that don't believe the same is learning how to hear what they're not saying to help I identify what their ceiling is and what your role in their life looks like to help them shatter that. Right. I think that's phenomenal, even that you mentioned on the culture. Yeah. And we'll, you know, segue into your Bridge of Hope Global, mm -hmm. you know, and everything that you've done and the work that you're, you know, still doing with that. But culture does play a big part. Absolutely. And I think sometimes we miss out on that part. Absolutely. Um, when you just look at the Christian faith, you know, the different denominations, how, you know, different churches or different things are set up. Yep. Um, where sometimes people may be able to connect with you but not connect with your culture. And that sometimes could be uh, a barrier that you have to That's overcome. That's so true. But as you mentioned, getting down to the root of where they are and how to make that more authentic connection with yeah. them, I think that that is the most purest form of love. I totally agree. I really do think that that, I mean, you know, people talk about love and, you know, this culture, we'll have another segment where we talk about <laughs> love and all those different things but that I believe is the purest definition of love for people yes to be able to say let me get down to where you are let me open my ear a little bit that. more to really hear you know what you're saying even if we don't have the same background or went to the same schools or the same neighborhoods Absolutely. you know like I can still make a connection and show you a pure love because you matter Right, Absolutely. like you matter, you're important, and I think that sometimes people once again see people with titles or platforms yes. or different things, and they think that there's a level of inauthenticity with just wanting to connect with people, and that's not true. Everything yeah. is not posted. Every yeah. every moment isn't you know made into a post or a reel or you know a, a story. Yeah. There are real life connections, as I'm sure you've had Absolutely. many that happen beyond the camera, beyond social media, that may just be you speaking a word of encouragement to somebody while you're in the store. Absolutely. You know what I mean? Like, but the impact I think that's made when you take out the time that you've taken and I'm sure others have taken to really just say, I hear you. Yep. I see you. It can be life altering for people. Absolutely. It really, really can because one thing I've learned is that people know when you're faking the funk. Oh my, absolutely. People know when you absolutely. don't, when you're not really like, can yeah. we, you know, we're going to keep it real. When you have an agenda. When you have an agenda. So why do you pursue yes. it? Yes, it is. <laughs> right. And, and why we want to help her. Are you serving yes. the homeless on Sunday? You know, yes. <laughs> you donate clothes or, you know what I mean? Yes. Like, listen, we. I keep it real on here. Yes. So it's too real for you. You know, you can hop off, you know, pop back on at a different time. But it's the truth. Yeah. And coming from the inner city. Yeah. Right? Yep. Where we have many common threads. But yes. growing up in the inner city, that's one thing that people would always, you know, people always can say, like, oh, that person's fake. Like, you, yeah. you just know yep. when somebody is Absolutely. being genuine. You know when somebody really rocks with you yep. on that level. Yep. So as we're talking about making those connections and seeing people and hearing people yep. and, and being able to figure out what the common thread is, even if it's not faith. Yeah. How are we able to develop that connection? It may be just a one-time thing. Yeah. It may be over time where you're in that person's life Absolutely. and you're being used to help them to develop and become yeah. more and see their purpose and see their body, Absolutely. right? And and or it may be for you to bridge that connection to someone else. Yeah. Maybe the introduction started yeah. with you because of your warmness. I, I've said this in my last couple episodes. Friendliness goes a long way. This culture of me and oh, yeah. me yeah. and oh, world up. You know, like, yeah. 
it just kills me because it's like, for what? Yes. Why are you mean? Why yes. are you not speaking to people? Yes. Like, I don't understand. Yes. You know what I mean? But that friendliness goes a long way. And that's another universal language. Absolutely. Like, the kindness. If you look at other cultures, and I'm sure, you know, we're about to speak on that for all the traveling and ministering yes. and all the things yes. that you've done, that kindness is, is a common thread. It really weaves people together when you can just share a smile or just say hello yep. or you know what I mean so on that subject where we're talking about cultures and different people mm -hmm. tell me more about this mission that you you started absolutely so um, I've been back in the states for eight years mm -hmm. and within one year of being back really felt like the Lord was leading me to uh, Africa I didn't know wow. what country, I didn't know what it was going to look like, but I could feel a pull to go. Mm -hmm. And at the time, again, I had been away already for six years, and so when I came back and shared with my family, I think I'm going to go to Africa, their initial thought is, you just got back. Like, how are you now feeling like you're supposed to leave the country again? You've been right. gone for six years, but right. are you supposed to see then you go see them. You know? right. And I felt like the Lord was leading me um, on a journey. Mm -hmm. I felt like God was saying to me, Miracle, your entire life, you've known me one way. And that's one way through different facets, right? Like, because at that point, I had already pastored in the Virgin Islands, I had already right. pastored in British Columbia, and of course, had done ministry extensively in the US. And for God to still say that there's a limited expression of what you know about me, and there's something about this trip that I'm gonna take you on on a one way ticket with wow. one suitcase with zero contacts except for friendly friends that I knew through a contact in British Columbia who were from Kenya, mm -hmm. um, that I'm going to take you on this journey and you're going to learn about who you are and you're going to learn about who I am in a very, very different way. And to be honest with you, I had no full idea of what I was getting myself into. I just knew that I had a word from God. Mm -hmm. I knew that the Lord was going to financially provide right. um, because at that point I had been God employed for a year. Now it's eight years, but at that point I was one year in of being completely God employed and God telling me that he was going to completely financially take care of me. Right. As long as I took care of him, right. he was going to be faithful to make sure that every need that I had would be provided for. Mm -hmm. And so when this came about, my family kept saying, how are you going to get the money to be in East Africa for three months. Right. And I said, it's going to happen because God told me I'm supposed to go and I trust him and I trust this process. Right. And so I went on one way ticket, didn't have a return ticket. And I had looked a lot of places that I could stay. Mm -hmm. I had a family friend from uh, who I met in British Columbia um, whose siblings still lived in Kenya, wow. didn't know their socioeconomic status. All I knew was that the family said, you, you can stay with us until you figure out what it is that you feel like God is like leading you to do. I think they kind of thought it was a little strange, but they felt like, hey, if you feel like you're led to be here, we have a home you can stay in. Right. Now, the interesting thing is that I did not know the socioeconomic status of this family right. until I get there and there's a driver waiting for me and the driver is told she looks like Washira, which is the last name of this family. They said, she looks just like us, so you'll see her in the airport. She looks just like us. Just look for someone that looks like a Washira. Right. She's just a little bit lighter, but she looks just like us. Mm -hmm. And lo and behold, I look very similar to the Kamau family and I'm very like, um, my close friend, um, who, who is who has me in years, uh, a lot of my friends are significantly older than me, but uh, she just was here. She came in to visit my grandmother off of a whim wow. um, and didn't even tell me. <laughs> I got a call that your friend from Kenya is in the hospital right here. I'm like, what? So anyway, I'm there in uh, the airport. I get picked up, end up in a diplomat community, had no idea, armed men everywhere, was driving around with security, had no idea of what I was getting my in myself into. Right. While I was there, a stranger reaches out to me from a town called Bugoma. Wow. And I don't have any connection, so there's no mutual friends on social media. So you know how you have, you know, they say you're just, what, a few separation of degrees from, from people. This is Kenya. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I have no mutual friends right. <laughs> with this person inboxing me. To this day, I still don't even know how they heard, out, how, how they heard about me. Right. And um, it may have been a hashtag or something that could have highlighted this person in the country. And so they said, would you be willing to come to my village? I told this very wealthy family in Nairobi that I think I'm gonna to fly to Kasumu. Wow. And I'm gonna get in a car with a stranger and go into a town two hours away from the airport called Bungoma. Wow. And they're like, Bungoma? We don't even go to Bungoma. 
But hey, how about you leave your expensive things here because you don't know where you're going to be living or anything and just fly back from here before you head to Uganda. And so I got to Kisumu and there was at the time a young man by the name of Arwins Macau who was waiting for me there with an oversized suit on and some children who had uh, who knew no English and school uniforms on and I get in a car that looked like it was 30 years old and the driver spoke no English, no one in the car is speaking English because they're talking to each other right, trying to figure out this, this, and they were calling me Mazumu, which actually means, which means white person. Um, so they actually, lighter complexion. Yeah. and they did it, and their association in some parts um, of areas where there's not a whole lot of visitors is that people who who speak the way we speak it is white, are white people, right? right? Are, are Anglo-Saxon or they're European, right? Mm -hmm. And so the fact that I'm black American was a very unique thing until I showed them my parents, which you see my parents, both of my parents are significantly darker than I am. And I think they thought I was adopted. Um, and then they said, oh, black American. I'm like, yeah, I'm not Muzungu. I'm black American. My roots are somewhere right. in the motherland. Don't know where, but somewhere. And the Lord broke me. Um, the Lord broke me is what I can say in short. The Lord broke me. He took everything that I knew about church, everything I knew about faith, and showed me how limited I had been my entire life in my experience with God. I ended up in a community based on Arvins Macau, um, which is in Kakamega County, Musamba Village, um, which now that person from six years, seven years ago is now the chief of the village. Wow. Um, he just became the chief earlier this year. His inauguration was earlier this year. By way of how God used what I eventually started as Bridge of Hope Global to majorly spotlight a community that had zero support. There was no foundations there, no organizations there, very uncharted territory. And what it did for me was show me, because at the time, I had moved back to the States and I had been in an on and off relationship for 10 years. And I knew at that point the relationship had ended. And when I went to East Africa and the Lord began to speak to me, the Lord said to me, you were worried about a relationship not working out and a man not choosing you. And I literally called you for a country. Wow. I, I, you're, you're worried about a person not choosing you. And I am calling you out for an entire village. I, there's a mural. There's a mural in Bungoma with my face on it. Like, wow. like God showed me in that moment that I had a very insignificant view. Mm -hmm. Even in how I felt about myself as the king's daughter, right. the Lord showed me that I had a very insignificant view of really what the beauty of life was all about. Right. Until I got there and the Lord said, you're the answer to this solution. You're, you're, pardon me, you're the answer and you're the solution to the problems that you see in front of you. And though I'm not called to help everyone, those that I am assigned to help, God will bring the financial increase. And so I watched God um, that year. It was probably within less than a week. The Lord had sent maybe ten dollars to $15,000 in a week that first year. And that was before I even became a nonprofit. So there was no receipts. There was right. nothing. Right. It was only me posting pictures and me saying, hey, this is what I'm doing. Hey, I just bought, I just bought cement. Hey, I just bought some bricks. Hey, right. I just... And people really um, recognize that either miracles have a midlife crisis because we never seen her with her hair pulled back, right? Because our, our view of miracle expressing beauty is her pearls every day, and it's her hair done every day, and it's her heels, and now she's in the village, right? With, with her, and, and she just living, stuff. right? And I became so one with myself, and one with life, and one with faith that it changed me. And from 2016, so now the Lord has allowed my organization, Bridge of Hope Global, to do amazing things in the community. A home was built, vehicle purchased, school developed, land bought, like you name it, God has done it with very little sponsors. Like I don't have a lot of sponsors, right. but in the moments where I have a desire to see God do something, the Lord reminds me that. The vision I've given you, yes. that I've co-signed on, that, that I say belongs to me, mm -hmm. I'll provide for it. Absolutely. And it'll be something like, oh, God, I really want to do something this month, but I don't have the extra 800 or I don't have the extra 1700 And someone will literally inbox me, hey, I just haven't seen a whole lot of posts lately about your organization, but God just told me to, to send something yes. to you. And it'll be exactly what I needed to see some things happen. And so it's really been a grassroots dynamic, though it's really been a very large um, movement that has taken place. They know who we are when we get there. Right. Um, a good friend of mine, Esther, 
Matthews, who's from California, who's, who lives in California, the Oakland area. She's been, as they say, my ride or die. Whatever I say we're doing, that's what we do. If I say we eat with our hands, if I say we're sleeping in a tent, <laughs> if I say we're not eating a day, right? Like, she has been such an amazing partner with me and has gone on the trip every single year. And even in my absence back in 2019, she went on my behalf to represent me, her and a woman named Tanya Carrington, to represent me in my absence. Yes, yes. absolutely, yes. absolutely. They, they, they soak her up in mm-hmm. Uganda. Yeah, like, they have such a big warm personality. Yes. She's a beautiful person. Yes, mm-hmm. yes, absolutely. And so that's that's how it happened. It really was a leap of faith. It really was answering a call by God, not really knowing that I needed it. I really believe that the work that I do with Bridge of Hope Global has been me really responding to um, something in me that needed to be tapped into that I don't believe America had the ability to give me and that God made it so that everything that was needed for it to happen, it happened and continues to happen. Right. Yeah. I love it. I mean, you you spoke on so many different things and I know as people are watching and people will watch the replay, like please watch the whole thing. Because yes. she just shared talking about jewels, like nuggets like this big. Okay. Dropping major jewels and a few things stood out to me from what you shared. One was accepting the call. Yep. Right? I know a lot of people struggle with that because that's like phase one. Yeah. Of really being like, okay, this is what I'm called to do. Whether yeah. it's in the faith or it's just in life. Yeah. Whether you're, you know, you're accepting the call to be a doctor or a veterinarian or in science or in politics. Making like having that acceptance to say, yeah, I'm going to come into agreement, yeah, with what I know I'm supposed yeah. to be doing, even though it doesn't make sense, even though some yeah. people may not agree with it, they'd be like, oh, you know what? I know you're over here. You really should like. There's an inner knowing, yeah, when you know that you're called to do something and accepting it, marrying it, yes, becoming yes. one with it is to hear that from you is so beautiful because sometimes if it's not really what you had envisioned yeah it can have you to run the opposite direction absolutely and now you're running away from it absolutely and it's going to chase you down for people yes <laughs> who are watching yes. and yes. you're running yes. whatever call that you have um instead of accepting and embracing it even with the uncertainties yeah. right yeah you didn't have all the answers no i transitioned you even yes, you had an initial transition. Yeah, but then you had multiple transitions yeah. in yeah. that. It didn't end. It, right. And even while I was there, mm-hmm. there were moments that I would cry myself to sleep because I could feel. Because mm-hmm. like, let's make note that I was there alone. Right. right. So, so I don't speak Swahili. I don't have any exactly. friends or family there. I'm there alone. Right. right. I could sense this transition taking place in me because I was seeing so many things that I wanted to meet the needs of, right? Like I was seeing so many children and so many families and so many widows and so many people who needed help Mm -hmm. and feeling so limited, right? And the Lord saying to me, miracle, this is what causes people to not move forward. Mm -hmm. Trying to be everything to everyone instead of only being what I called you to be for those that are the sign. And it was in that that God really started to really show me, miracle, I haven't called you for Kenya. But I've called you to Musama. Mm-hmm. I've called you to Kakamega County. Mm-hmm. You can't meet the needs of all of Kenya, but you can meet the needs of where I brought you. And I think that people stop short yes. of their ability and their potential to be really great because they're trying to meet and trying to be and trying to live in a perspective of something that is so big mm-hmm. instead of realizing that there's something big. That you've been assigned to do, but it's in your reach and it's within your capacity. It's not all the way over here. It's right. what you have in your hands now. Mm-hmm. What can you, you? You don't got eighty thousand right now, but do you got eight thousand? Right. You got eight hundred. Right. Do you, can we start with eighty? <laughs> can we start with eighteen? Right. You know, and, and really recognizing that it can be intimidating. Right. Right. For someone to hear that and say, "Oh, well, I, I can't go all the way to Africa," or "I can never do that," or "How does she go there on a one-way ticket? How does she go there not knowing anyone?" The same way that you go on a vacation, hoping that you enjoy yourself. Right. Okay. That you say right. That works. <laughs> the same way that you make a purchase on something that you don't really know if it's actually going to be what you thought. Online shopping. Right. You know, it just may be a different price point, but it's the same thing. You're putting your trust in what you put your money in, mm-hmm. hoping that there will be an experience or appreciation or a pleasantry in what you've financially invested in. Right. 
Yeah, I think that's amazing. And what would you say to someone who is struggling with accepting that call or their faith is being stretched yeah. beyond what they had envisioned for their life? Yeah. What type of advice would you give? Yeah, I think that it's coming to a place to realize that life and our identity and our journey comes with twists and turns. Um, I believe that in my personal journey, and, and you and I, we spoke a little bit about it a few days ago. It might have been a week ago. I don't have the best sense of time at this point in my life. And with everything else happening, I'm like, what day is it? What time is it? <laughs> don't know. So I, I'm awake. I just know I'm awake. Right. Um, but I believe that when we hit moments and spaces in our life that look like uncertainty and looks like there's a struggle with calling or the way we think something should look, we really have to dig deep and dig um, into a space of discomfort mm -hmm. to really ask ourselves what does the change or what does the shift or what does the challenge or what does the struggle actually mean? Mm -hmm. What is it supposed to pull out of me? Um, I think that for me, one of the most effective uh, journeys that I've had, when I say effective, I mean it's produced the greatest level of fruit in my life, has been marital separation. Uh, for me, there was a time in my life where I thought I was going to be like the Apostle Paul. He never married and he was called to a life of singleness and majority of my life even with dating right I always had something in my mind that led me to believe that I'm supposed to maybe be single my entire life that I'm just going to serve Jesus and there were certain doors that I haven't opened so there's certain temptations that I don't have or struggle with right and when the Lord told me in 2018 that the man that I had met was to be my husband it was a very spiritually arranged situation and we both we're very clear on this is so God, this is so not us. Right. We didn't meet in the normal way. Everything was very God-led and oriented. Right. But shortly within the marriage, we separated, and it was very public, and it was very apparent to people watching because we're both in ministry. Mm -hmm. So it was very apparent that, wait a minute, trouble's in paradise. Wait a minute, she's preaching here, he's preaching there. We don't see them in any photos. We don't see them on any flyers. Right. And it was during that time where I really wrestled and struggled with calling. Because my entire life, I've lived a way that's created a certain image of consistency mm -hmm. and fruit that has come by way of, I know what God has said, I'm doing what God has said, and fruit follows it, right. and there's no seemingly error mm -hmm. attached to it. Right. So then you, you marry. And my wedding was a very public wedding. Mm -hmm. The entire city was invited to the wedding. And to be in a space where my stance in God and my stance in what I know God says to me is significant, I knew that I had to dig deep. So what I'm telling you to do isn't anything different than what God has challenged me in, even during three years of separation, to dig deep into recognizing that the truth of what we experience in life is based on how we allow God to process us and who we become in the uncertainty. As I stated, I didn't say I've been divorced for three years. I said I've been separated right. for three years, which difference. clearly speaks to uncertainty, yes. which clearly speaks to the unknown, right. which clearly speaks to a very gray area while serving a very certain God. Yes. So there can even be conflict in trying to understand sometimes the ways of God when you know that we serve a certain God where there's no mistakes, but then you have this very gray situation, this very uncertain situation. And what I've been challenged to learn throughout these three years has been, God, if you are God, and if I believe that you make no mistakes, I also believe that the greatest victory of my life is choosing to never deny my understanding of your perfection, even in what I don't understand. Right. And so I continue to live in the perfection of what I know that God has said to me. I continue to live in the truth of that. And I believe in calling, in relational dynamics, in business endeavors, mm -hmm. in things that we desire to tackle in life, that we have to plan for the unknown. Yes. We have to plan for uncertainty because it is in that that our faith is worked out, yes. but also that we truly identify our, our worth and value and our identity. There's some things about me right. over these past three years, <laughs> come on, that I would have never imagined. Right. There, there are some spaces and places. Right. There are some things that God has shown me. There are some circumstances and experiences that have taught me, wait a minute, you got some stuff in you and you ain't know that was in there. Yes. Wait a minute, you ain't, you ain't know that was in there. Let me show you. Let me show you. We get you all the way together. Yes, you ain't know that was in there. Yeah. And so I believe that it's in that um, that we really begin to dialogue personally mm -hmm. with the conflict of, of how we move forward in calling, 
how we move forward even in public disappointment, how we move forward in the expectations we put on ourselves mm -hmm. and the expectations we put on other people, yes. and recognizing that sometimes we put people and ourselves in boxes that only God belongs in. For sure. I mean, like, two snaps, a twist, a backflip. I'm going to do a backflip over to... <laughs> Over the couch, y'all yes. see my pink heels fly out the summer show. Right. <laughs> I mean, because you just touched on so many things, and as you said, places that are certain. I'm like, oh my god, you need to preach that. Yeah, that would. I mean, that just write that down. That resonates. Places of uncertainty. Yes, I mean, Jesus. That resonates Woo! so much when she soon that just that phrase. I'm like, ooh, that touched something because as you Jesus. mentioned that. It is a process in that place of uncertainty where you don't have the answer. You don't know, am I yeah. going left? Am I going right? Yeah. Am I sitting? Am I standing? Yeah. Am I going backwards? Am I going reverse? Uh -huh. Like, yeah. you don't know. And as you mentioned, if we trust the God that's unchangeable, yeah. right? Even as life is changing Absolutely. and evolving and yes. turning, then as you mentioned, yes. certain things are being worked out. Of you. Come on. Absolutely. Do you really trust? Absolutely. Do you really have the faith? Do you really believe what God said, even though nothing makes sense? One plus one is not equal to two. It's Come equal on. nine. Come on. You know, Come we're on. not, you know what I mean? Where like, it's come from. <laughs> it's come from. And as you mentioned, your continual self discovery yep. in that place of uncertainty and being honest and being, being honest and transparent. Honest, transparent, and being open to whatever that answer comes back to be because it may not be always what you want to hear you in a place of uncertainty there's certain things that will come out frustration anger yep. impatience yep. what is taking so long you know what I mean what, why don't I have an answer why yep. is this not happening yep. it should have been happening about now yep. it's not making sense to me I'm yep. everything I'm yep. supposed what to you be saying one this one eight, eight, I mean, it's not the man is the You're just God, you're a perfect God, so this is still not, you know, but those places of uncertainty are used to not break you down. Yes. And even if they're breaking you down, they're building you back yes. up to become better, to become wiser, to become yes. stronger. Yes. And more importantly, to lose control. That's so good. Wow. Well, to just lose control. Wow. Well, like you said, you you connected with the perfection of God. Yes. What he's called and what he's yes. said in this moment in this season, yeah. right? And I feel like in order for you to have done that, you have to release that control. Oh, absolutely. You have to release control of what did you say, the outcome yep. of what yep. this is supposed to look like. When I open this door, it should be a white hallway down. But yes. if I open it and it's pink and there's balloons falling everywhere, then it's like, hold on, hold on, no. Yes. That's not what's supposed to be on the other side. That's, the door. That's not the right door. And I feel like from what you're saying, not losing that sense of control and trusting that whatever the outcome is, even if it's not what yep. you envisioned for yep. it to be, Absolutely. that you are able to become okay with that. Yeah. And you see the value in it. The I value. tell people all the time yes. that there is such a fire and passion that I have for life now yeah. that I did not have before. Mm -hmm. And I believe that I've always been, and people will probably say, when, when are you not on fire, Michael? Like, <laughs> right, I'm talking about, like, what I'm are you talking about? You have a passion and fire that you never had. Like, okay, whatever you say. Mm -hmm. But there's been an internal work that God has done in me mm -hmm. during these past three years that I do not believe would have taken place yes. without marital crisis. Right. I do not believe that I would have the fire. I do not believe that I would have the reach and the influence mm -hmm. that I do in the lives of women. Mm -hmm. I don't believe that God would use because this, this is the kicker. When you know that God has brought change and transformation to your life and you're not bitter and you're not angry and you're not mad and you everything God said that you are, you can speak into the success of other people's lives that look like a failure in your own. 
And so looking at how God uses me mm -hmm. to speak into women's lives who have flourishing marriages, mm -hmm. who have beautiful families, right. who, who have these things that I don't have, and to recognize that it's through that way. Of, and, and we talk about beneath your beauty. Yes. It's saying, hey, my beauty may look different than your beauty, yes. but there's something beneath the journey of yes. what has become beautiful for me. Absolutely. I sleep well. I eat well. I Yes, girl. There, there's a, come on. There's a beauty. Attached that's beneath the surface yes. um, of what I believe often is highlighted. Yes. When you when, when I think of this vision that God is giving you, I find it to be so powerful because we live in such a superficial yes. society and culture. And it's not just in the world, it's in the church too. Yes, it is. And so I found it and have found and, and continually find it to be necessary for me to always be authentic to what God tells me. For those of you who may have ever seen me on social media, I may be on a live one day and I got my eyebrows on and my red lipstick and then I may be on social media another day and I have a hair scarf on right. and I have a pajama shirt on mm -hmm. because I believe that the authenticity of how beautiful we are yes. is based on us being true to ourselves mm -hmm. and not trying to live up to an image. Because mm -hmm. I know what I look like with my summer hair. Yeah. I know what I look like with my mascara and my red lipstick and I know what I look like when I got a ball cap on and different mm -hmm. eyebrows on and got some vaseline on my lips too and i feel just the same you know i may take more pictures you know with the, the vacation <laughs> but i feel just the same right and so i i love it because what it does is i believe that it brings us all on the same level mm -hmm. um and it positions us to have to really i think be honest with ourselves yes. about what type of beauty do we really want to possess Absolutely. do we want to possess the the outward beauty that is only skin deep, or do we want to go beneath the beauty, right? And really look at what gives us the fulfillment and what really gives us the, the joy in our life, you mm -hmm. know? And I mean, I think as women, I mean, we always like to get a new dress or a new yeah. something or another, but I think that there's nothing like knowing that you hit a place where you're not wrestling with the things you used to wrestle with. Sure. I think you shine different. I think you glow different. I think you live different when you're like, I'm really not wrestling. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm really not struggling. I, mm -hmm. I find it interesting that there are people even to this day even it being years of a separation of people sometimes giving strange comments and i think to myself oh that's unfortunate because they must not know fulfillment in god mm -hmm. in the midst of what looks like mm -hmm. discomfort or Absolutely. discipline that's really unfortunate it because is i just know god in a different way i know god that says your situation may look like it's crumbling but you're still accomplishing and you're still excelling and yes. And I think that that's something that we don't hear people talk about often, how you can achieve and be fulfilled and live in complete fulfillment while trusting that God is the one that's over everything that looks like it's in disarray. Yeah. And if it really brings out beauty in you, is it really disarray? Like, is, is, it, really, is it really that much of a storm? Right. If you really look better now than what you've ever looked? <laughs> If you, if you feel better now than what you've ever felt, I look at photos of myself and I'm like, I look different. Mm -hmm. I feel like a couple of years, like, I mean, I, I look different. Right. I feel different. How I express myself and communicate with people is mm -hmm. from such a, a genuine um, and, a, and a really authentic place because I'm, I'm really open about my journey. And I've always believed even in faith mm -hmm. um, and even in, you know, we know each other very well. Yes. So even in my family dynamic of having parents who struggled in addiction. I mean, I, I've seen so many different facets and experiences of life mm -hmm. that someone looking at my life would wonder how does she have the passion and the faith that she has right. with the life experiences that she has, even with my grandmother. You know, I'm right. in the role of being a complete um, caregiver for my grandmother and for my uncle, right. both at the same time, and they're in their 80s, which everything in my life has been has come to a halt in right. some ways. But in the same way, God has transitioned my life in a yes. different way. And so I think that the, the the power and the beauty beneath it all yes. is really how you're allowing yourself to be challenged and changed and shining while you're allowing God to deal with the rubble. Right. I mean, even to so many points that you made, but outwardly people being able to speculate. Absolutely. Right. And, yeah. And look and come try on. to come up with. Absolutely. Oh, maybe there it is. This, or yes. maybe it's that. Or maybe it's this. But as you mentioned, the fact that God is digging beneath the soil, dealing with the root yep. of a lot of different things, but the outcome being 
the blossom that comes through, right? The beauty that comes out of a lot of this digger deeping yeah. in your life, even for some of it that's public. Yep. That may be uncomfortable. Yep. Because as you mentioned, you had a very public wedding, you yeah. had a very public proposal. So yeah. people probably automatically feel entitled Absolutely. to be able to, to answer, answer it. To answer it. Right. Everything. Everything. Yeah. yeah. But as you mentioned, the fact that God is keeping you. Yeah. And he's evolving you and he's pruning you yeah. in some ways. Yeah. And allowing you to evolve into an even greater version that you probably wouldn't even have been had this journey not taken yeah. place. As you mentioned, there is beauty there. Yeah. And I think that a lot of people miss out on that beauty because they want it to be a certain way. Yeah. They're looking for a certain picture. They're looking yes. forward to know that it has to look like this for it to be this. Yeah. And that's not true. That's yeah. not the case. It could look like something completely different and still be healthy. Absolutely. Every plant, if you have a green thumb, my mother has a green thumb. Y'all, I don't have a green thumb. That's not, that's not my ministry. That's not my ministry. My ministry is indoors, so you know. <laughs> indoors. Indoors. I'll put a pillow together. I'll put it out. I don't have a green thumb. But one thing that I've, I've watched my mother at her home, she, she has a, a very beautiful home. And she's always out in the yard. All the plants don't look the same. Right? Uh, um, some of them are fully like blooming and huge. Some of them are really little. Some of them are spiky. Some of them look weird. But they're all beautiful. Mm -hmm. And they all have different levels. And you can't look at one and say, oh, that's not healthy because it's not as big as this one. Yep. Yep. It, that's not how that works. And I feel like it's the same with our lives if we're out on the outside Absolutely. looking in, right? You can't see into the soil and inner roots of some man's life just based off of social media. Come on, come people. On. Hi, come girls. on. Yeah. You can't. Yeah. It's the same with the plant or flower. You can't, when you're looking at it, you can't see deep into the roots and say, yeah. oh, this is the seed that got this this plant here. Yeah. This is the seed that got this to turn purple. This is the seed that got it to turn pink. You don't know. You don't know the, the, what's beneath the yeah. surface that got people to the point that they are, but you can't Absolutely. judge or speculate to say, because this is not what I think it should look like, that this isn't that. So even with your process of, I, I was at your wedding. Yes. And to see um, the beauty and, and the love and everything that was there, and even with the transition, the only thing that would come to my mind is prayer. Yeah. And I honestly think that that's the only thing that's ever necessary. Yeah. Ever. Yeah. Because you don't know. Yeah. You don't know what's happening. And I'm sure you can speak to even whether it was a message, a call, somebody randomly saying something that was a little off color or off season. And it's like, but they don't know. Yeah. They don't know what's beneath, what's happening Absolutely. beneath the social media posting. Absolutely. Even though you're still going live and you're still preaching Absolutely. and you're still teaching and smiling and, and praying and ministering, they don't know what's going on beneath the surface. And I feel we have to be careful, Christian, non-Christian, whoever, as we're speaking and what we're saying about people to people. Yeah. Because you don't know. Yeah. And... It, it's, it can be more harmful Absolutely. than anything. Yeah. Because you don't know what it took for them to get out the bed yeah. that morning. Yeah. Or for them to still minister at work or they're feeling yeah. like, no, nah, I'm just, this is it. I'm packing up my car, yeah. I'm right out so I can't. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. you, you just don't know. Yeah. And I think that in those seasons where it's more public, yeah. the transition and and the, the prof you being That's process, it. Absolutely. that. Whatever you're not seeing or whatever's not adding up, it doesn't matter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That That's so solid because I think of early on within the first month and a half of being separated, I remember having these moments of anger, like these, these floods and rush of anger. And a close sister friend of mine and actually my prayer partner, um, she would say to me, um, maybe you don't need to be on social media today. Maybe you need to not be on today because you're kind of in a space where I think you might say something or moments where I felt like I'm going to tell people on social media what's going on. I'm going to put these things out here. And what the Lord began to say to me is that, one, the platform that I've given you is mine, not yours. True. So it's not the platform that I've given you to do what you want to do. Mm -hmm. And secondly, 
there is a necessity for us to understand how we, especially as believers, how we represent God's kingdom even in crisis. Mm -hmm. And I think that we give ourselves passes and we give ourselves justifiable mm -hmm. reasons of why we can act out. And the Lord said to me, shortly after the separation within days, come off of social media. Wow. So for a month and a half, I wasn't on social media. And during that time, the Lord began to really deal with my heart. He began to deal with my hurt. Mm -hmm. He began to deal with my tears. He began right. to deal with my wrongs. He began to deal with my disappointment. And when I came back to social media, I came back to social media back in a place of focus. Mm -hmm. So when I came back, I did a live on that Sunday morning, preached a word. It didn't have anything to do with my marriage. It didn't have anything right. to do with where I've been. Then the Lord said, when you come back, now that you're back, you're on a three-day series the following week. So people hadn't seen you for a month and a half. Right. Then I come back live on a Sunday. I'm giving you how God tells me to give it to you. Mm -hmm. Oh, and next week I'm going to be doing a three-day series. <laughs> and I know y'all out here thinking I'm ready to drop the tea. No, I'm giving y'all Jesus. Right. And... <laughs> The Lord said, Miracle, when you come back, it's going to be what people have always known about you. Your priority has been the Lord. That's so it, It's been your priority, and, and it's not your job to give people your story. That's it's right. your job to give people mine. That's right. And so I'm, I'm super grateful because you don't know what people go through. You don't know the temptations that people have. You don't know the temptations that people struggle in or fall into. Right. And I think that it's so significant, especially in this season, to make sure that we're giving public room for people to be dealt with by God. Yes. Because it's really interesting to, to navigate through what you know God is saying to you when people are saying what they think. And when mm -hmm. people are giving your, their opinion of what they think you should do next and, mm -hmm. and how you should navigate things and mm -hmm. what you should be entitled to. And, mm -hmm. and girl, if I was you, this is what I would do. And but you're not. That part. <laughs> that part. But you're not. Yeah. You, I mean, anybody can say there's a burning building. Oh, I would have ran up this way. I would have went through the window. I, I would have went through the back door. I would have went through the bank. You don't know until you're in that position. That part. That part. Because while you're saying you would have went through the side door and the back thing, you don't know that there was mice and you have a phobia of mice. So that's you wouldn't be able to do that. And maybe you said you're going to go that way, but you didn't know that that door was actually locked and the handle was actually yeah. hot. And so. <laughs> Girl. Listen, and, and I, I know in seasons past, I, I believe this is a very transparent, authentic platform um, where I've been guilty of speculating things that I've seen on social media. Yeah. Whether it was just a celebrity, and I'm like, oh, I wonder what's going on. They don't yeah. post or she's a different culture. culture. It, it is the culture, culture. Yeah. but it, I had to check myself to say, is it really your business? Wow. Is it really your business to know why she lost 40 pounds or why they don't post as much or now they took down the pictures and it's only picture right. right, right, right. You know what I mean? Like, I'm, this is being, I'm, being, I'm keeping it 100. Yes. You know, and I have to start thinking, like, I've gone through seasons where maybe they weren't as public, but they were still as painful. Wow. They were still as painful, even though they weren't public. And what I want somebody coming to me or sitting in a group chat sending messages about me or, you know, resharing stuff about me, speculating on something they have no idea about, and it changed my perspective. So now I see, I'll just keep scrolling. God help them. And I'll keep it moving because as quickly as the weather changes, season change, your life can change. And as you're speculating and you're looking yeah. and you're nitpicking on someone, you can find yourself in that same, if not worse, yeah. conditions of that person while you're prejudging something you have no idea about and you don't know how God is processing Absolutely. them. You don't know what God has spoken to them. You, they are not entitled to tell you anything yeah. or clear up anything for you or, or you know, shed light on anything. It's, it, it's not necessary. Yeah. So yeah. I, I can only imagine... With the transition that you've gone through and are going through, the things that are out there, mm -hmm. the people say, the people speculate, and my hope is that, you know, what I mean, specific, you know, specifically for believers is to just be mindful um, of what you're saying or what you're speaking, and if you don't know what to say or you see something that doesn't quite add up, just say a prayer and keep yeah. it. Yeah. Moving. It doesn't like that. Yeah. have to be a whole conversation and you calling this person, y'all on a freeway and you in a group, <laughs> you know, you in a group chat and you know what I mean? Like this is very real because I I I've, I've been on the outside of overhearing things. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, wow, y'all really sitting around having a whole conversation.
conversation about this person that you don't know what, you know what I mean? And a lot of times it's conversations that people are having over who they don't know. And especially for a scenario, specifically like mine, my wedding was open to the city. Yes. And so there are people at the wedding who I don't know, mm -hmm. who don't personally know me, who are, you know, it, it's such a weird culture that we're in, but our followers on social media. Yes. Um, which I'm grateful for because it's a platform that God has used for me to reach people mm -hmm. from Him. Mm -hmm. um, but as a result of that, people automatically feel like they know you or automatically mm -hmm. feel like, like you said, that there's an obligation that you yes. have to them. And of course, early on, things would get back to me. And I'd be like, but I've never even met them. Right, you're like, I don't even know this. Like, I've never met them right. ever. And it would be sometimes for people who had personal relationships with me. And so it would bring conflict. Like, well, well what are you saying? Because you personally have a relationship with me and you're talking to someone Talk about who it. doesn't know me at all. Right. Like, you know me. You know me. Like, we actually have right. each other's phone number. We don't know each other's lives. Right. And so I think that... There, there's this thing, you know, that has been pr produced by way of social media that creates such a, um, I don't even know what to call it, but such an unhealthy way yeah. of going about they not needing to be concerned about people. Like, yeah. you wouldn't normally have been concerned about someone you've seen at the bus stop that you've seen something happen. Yeah. But because there's this social media dynamic that brings in a level of intimacy with a person. Mm -hmm. um, it, it changes the dynamic. And to be honest with you, I had to be honest about that too, mm -hmm. right? Like, because I do live a public life, because my wedding was public, because my whole life, for the majority of my life has been public, right. that there were spaces and places where the Lord would lead me to share certain things. Mm -hmm. I've been very honest on social media to social media followers. The Lord has said that it was very important for me to be sensitive to the fact that it involves two people, right? Mm -hmm. And so while I'm very open and very, this is my life, that I had to be sensitive to my spouse. Right. But also being authentic to the fact that, hey, I am separated. Right. Hey, we separated 10 months in. Like, right. we didn't make it to a one-year anniversary. Like, all right. of these sorts of things and being okay with that because I recognize that it's also people recognizing that that you have life you have life outside of what is on here. Yes. And I think sometimes there's a need, and not that we look for scenarios to be relatable to mm -hmm. people, but I tell you, the reach and the influence that came by way of my vulnerability and my transparency and me going from a woman who married as a virgin to a woman who got married and the marriage ended, not ended, but the marriage, you know, went into a direction of separation before a one year anniversary. That changed the narrative of my life. Right. Because I had preached my entire life. You do these things. Yeah. And this should be your outcome. Mm -hmm. You live this way and this should be your outcome. Mm -hmm. And when my outcome looked different, God said, now what you going to tell the people now? Right. But what you did, was that in vain? Mm -hmm. How you lived your life, your entire life, was that in vain? Or are you going to show people that I put those who I can trust in the fire? Because mm -hmm. I know it's not going to burn them. Mm -hmm. I know it's going to create something different in you. And I tell people all of the time, and it may sound like a strange concept, and maybe something you've never heard before, but I believe that God chooses people for fire. Mm -hmm. When we look at Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, yes. you may or may not be familiar, but there's a passage in the scripture that speaks about three Hebrew men who literally were put into the fire because of what they would not agree to do. And it's interesting because you don't see another scenario in scripture about anyone being thrown in the fire but them. And God began to speak to me and say, Miracle, while we all want the blessing, there are certain people that I know I can trust in challenges. There are people that I know that I can trust in storms. And God said me, Miracle, I knew it wasn't going to break you. It was going to hurt you. It was going to be disappointing. You were going to have your moment and your moments. Mm -hmm. However, I know that I can trust you with this because your roots go down deep. Right. And you're not going to respond the way someone will respond who doesn't know me. Right. And I believe that it's in that I've seen the victory of God. And I've seen the joy of the Lord be my strength. Right. That's amazing. And I think people miss out on that part. Yeah. Because of, I mean, if you've ever been burnt by anything, you know the sensation that yeah. comes with that. Yeah. Even though this isn't a literal burning. Yeah. Um, but the things that are consumed. Yeah. In that burning, um, feelings. Yeah. Mindsets. Different things. It's painful. Yeah. It's uncomfortable. But you know the end game. You know the process. Yeah. That even though this is painful, this is uncomfortable, you know, all of the things that come yeah. with that, right? You're able to look at it from a different perspective yeah. and a different lens to say, this is uncomfortable, yeah. this is embarrassing, this doesn't make sense, this is hurtful, 
but I know that this isn't to destroy me. Come on. This is to work some things out of me, not just for me, as you mentioned, That's so good. for the people that you now have connection yes. with that may not have had the connection with you before. Yeah. So a lot of what you're saying, and I believe for myself and other people that you've experienced, is not always for you and about you. That's so good. Yeah. It's, just, it's just not. And I feel like in those moments, before we get through the full process, we're, we're, we're making it about us, right? We're making yeah. everything about us, even with them being in the fire. It's like, why yes. would you leave us in here? What are you doing? Like, yes. what are we even doing in here? You know what I mean? Like, and you'll have those moments and those times where you process it and you internalize it. Like, oh, this is about me, my platform, yeah. my people, you know, with my reputation, you know, regardless of the level that you're on. But you're forgetting the bigger picture. As you mentioned, some people are chosen for fire. Some people are chosen for harder obstacles yeah. or a harder journey. And I yeah. know a lot of people may not want to accept that yeah. Um, yeah. or embrace it because yeah. you're like, oh, it's no. hard. Right. It's, it's, it's a hard truth. Right. And then you know, people are like, no, no, no. Right. Yeah. Because it may mean something different for everyone. Yeah. And whether, you know, it could have been you, you know, got given up as a baby and went through a whole adoption and that took you through a different life path or just so it could be so many different things where you didn't understand it but you made it through and as you mentioned yeah it was another person who yeah. went through that journey yeah they may have not come out with that greater joy yeah right yeah that greater sense of assurance yeah you know what i mean like i love that um that old hymn is blessed and shorn. Yeah. You know what I mean? Jesus yeah. is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory to mine. Heir of salvation, purchase of blood, born of the spirit, washing his blood. What does it say? This is my story. Yes. You know what I mean? Like, there's an assurance that comes with even that process that you, you face and you go through that's painful, that's fiery, yeah. that's storms, blades, and lightning just striking and tearing your whole yeah. life apart. But as you mentioned it, it makes me think of not just people in the Bible, but people period that God knows he can trust. Yeah. That they're still going to preach. Yeah. They're still going to sing and break yeah. forth that song. Yeah. They're still going to go to work and be that best leader, best manager. They're still going to be at their best even through the process because they're trusted. Everybody's not trusted, yeah. I believe, with that level. And some people would have yeah. probably lashed out. They probably would have aired their laundry. They probably yeah. would have, you know what I mean, went in the opposite direction. Whether it was, you know, going into substance or yeah. being like, yeah. okay, God, you knew this was going to happen. I'm out. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. I'm going into the yeah. world. Yeah. There, there's a place for me yes. in the world. Yes. You know what I mean? <laughs> Period. You know yes. what I mean? Like, Everybody wouldn't have turned back to God. Yeah. They would have probably turned the other way yeah. and found themselves on a journey in the wilderness, Absolutely. in the valley somewhere, Absolutely. where they don't know where they are and God, like the prodigal yeah. son, got to come back and find you, snatch you, and clean you up. So that that to me speaks volumes to yeah. your level of maturity, but more importantly, your level of relationship that you have with God, like he's really literally your father. Absolutely. That even through such a devastating moment, it yeah. was a moment, thank yeah. God, the mm -hmm. moments changed. Absolutely. You were able to turn back to him yeah. to say, God, here's my broken heart. Yeah. Here's my frustration. Here's what's not me. You know what I mean? Yeah. Versus going the opposite way, you know, which many people have done, which is turn away from the face of. I, I, just, I just think that that is amazing. And hopefully... You know, we'll be wrapping up soon, but hopefully through her sharing and through this transparency, um, whether we watch the replay, I see there's people on both platforms, that something that is said, it resonates with you through your own story, through your own journey, whatever you're facing or may face or will face, Absolutely. you know, that you can look back and know and understand that there are people who've already walked through this and yeah. there are things that have helped them yeah. along the way and those things can also help you too. It's yeah. not a cookie cutter or one, mm -hmm. you know, like, oh, this is, it has to have this or it has to have that. Yeah. There are so many things that she said and she shared that can be beneficial to you on your walk and on your journey. So I hope as you're listening, you're not just tuning it out and walking through the room or in a car or wherever you are, watch the replay, please, please, please. Because these type of moments are rare. Yeah. They're rare. You, you're you not going to get a, a pastor that is influential on a high level with a big following that is this open, this transparent, and this honest 
about their life. It just it's not happening. It's just not. And I feel these moments are so powerful yeah. and significant, not just for me, but for so many people because they need to see yeah. the softer side. They need to see beyond the title, beyond yeah. the pulpit, you know what I mean, beyond the platform. They need to see that because people see us and they're thinking, oh, she got it all together with her makeup look. And they have no idea what's yeah. what beneath the surface. So that's this is the whole purpose of Beneath Your Beauty, to have these real, authentic, yeah. inspiring, impactful Absolutely. conversations. Even for me, just listening to you, um, it just touches my heart on so many levels because I'm. it, it just continues to further, further validate, like, okay, this is what I'm supposed to be doing. Yeah. You know what I mean? And it's continuing to evolve and, and unveil itself and develop but I know that there's a purpose and whether we don't know who's going to share it, where it's going to go, who's going to listen to it, you may be a pastor, you may be a minister, yeah. you may be an evangelist or somebody in ministry and you've walked through some extremely rough seasons and you've walked through some hard places where you didn't have mm -hmm. someone that you can talk to or yeah. someone that upholds you in that season when you we're going through something that weakened you and you now are able to see that there are other women out there who are paving the way, who are blazing the trail to say transparency in the church is okay. Yeah. It is okay, people. It's okay. I know, you know, a lot of times with you know different things that happens in the church that people, you know, have behind their titles or not wanting to be forthcoming about things, but this is important because I know there are women in ministry who've been through divorce mm -hmm. and been through abortions and been through miscarriages and been through abuse. Yeah. And they didn't see somebody yeah. who looked like them. Yeah, that's so good. To be able to say, oh, okay, God, wow, I'm really not alone. Yeah. Because there's not always a time where you're able to be transparent and open because yeah. of the platform that you have. And you have to use wisdom in how much you're transparent. Because everything isn't for everybody. Yeah. You know, certain things you're meant to share, some things you aren't. So that just was really on my heart, specifically for women in ministry, whether you sing, you're a psalmist, you're a preacher, a musician, preacher, pastor, whatever. Please know you are not alone in the struggles that you face, whether they're relational, financial, physical, that God has a community of women out there who have experienced and are going through the things that you're going through yeah. and that can shed light and that can, you know, be that listening ear for you and show you that love. So I just, I, this whole thing has just been amazing. I know we're wrapping up. Um, we're done at two, but I'm just going to um, just close out basically. Um, we have a few minutes. Is there anything you want to share? I have one last question to ask before we close out. I just feel like what you're doing is amazing. I'm just so grateful and so thankful um, to have had this opportunity to sit with you and yes. to be a part of your vision. I think that when people have an idea about something and they choose to move forward in it, it's a really big deal because we get ideas every day, right? We, we, we've all been guilty of, I got an idea to do this. I'm a, one day I'm going to do that. And, and we don't do it. And so to see how you continually follow through with what God has given you and rock it out with that it is such a beautiful thing and so I'm just super honored to be a part today of the Beneath Your Beauty community. Yes, thank you so much and obviously like I said the honor is all mine. Y'all don't know but we go way back to Little Girls at Petra yes. International Ministry. Yes, That's, yes, yes. You know, both where we got our, our birthing of, yep. you know, our gift to do so many things but that's yep. where our connection at the heart really started. And so many years after that, yeah. um, as you being a teenager, preaching, and, you know, be going to support, um, always believing in you from day one, from the beginning, and to see how God is just using you to continue to impact, not just locally, but nationally and globally, is absolutely phenomenal. So I just wanted to, to just share that. Um, so last question um, before, you know, we close out. With all the things that you achieve, all the milestones, everything, what advice would you give to any woman um, on their journey of, of how they can really um, just own their story? Mm -hmm. I love that. Um, to one, believe that your story is worth being heard. Yes. 
I think a lot of times we put a muzzle on our story or in certain chapters in our life because we don't really see the significance and the value of what happens when we release what has happened, what we've experienced, what we've endured, what we've accomplished, who we've become. And I think when we begin to look at our life through the lens of it really being a solution for a right now problem that someone else has, it gives us a different sense of urgency to not sit on ideas, to not sit on different vision, to not sit on books, to not sit on the opportunity to really share our hearts when we really believe that there's someone connected to it. I think that everything that I've, every decision I've made, everything that the Lord has allowed me to accomplish has come by way of really believing that God keeps waking me up every day because I'm supposed to meet the need of someone somehow. I'm not meant to meet all of the needs, but my existence and the reason why God keeps waking me up every day is because as long as I'm aligned with him, I'm going to meet the need of someone. And I think that that's our story. I think that's our life. I think that's our position at work. I think that's our decision to pursue higher education. I believe that's our decision to go for the mortgage, to go for the business loan, to, to do these things because there are people watching us that we don't know are watching us. And my grandmother has told me that my entire life mm -hmm. that she, she, she was telling me, you don't know who's watching you. Mm -hmm. And just a really quick, quick story. I was in Canada and have been living there. A close friend of mine, you probably remember Linda Mason. Yeah, uh, she had lived in California for a very long time. Yes. And I went to go see um, our mutual friend years and years ago. I've been in the US eight years since it was probably about 10 years ago. I went to go visit her. I ended up at her church. Lo and behold, the pastor of her church, she introduces him to me or introduces me to him. And he looks, he says, oh, okay, miracle, huh? Or, oh, okay, you're, she says, she's pastoring in British Columbia. And most people don't know British Columbia is Canada. Right. And so he says, oh, miracle, huh? Oh, okay, Canada. Oh, that's great. He walks through the crowd. I could tell that the church was really well off. Um, later, he ended up being on a pretty widely broadcast TV show. Um, but lo and behold, when, the, when, this, when this event was over that we attended, she says, well, do you, we were waiting to get an autograph from, from, from uh, his wife who was coming out with an album. And um, she says, do you want to go talk to the preacher before, if, because the line was really long. Let's wait till the line goes down, let's go talk to him. And in my mind, people don't really understand. I really am shy. And people don't really understand that about me because of platform preaching and all these things. But you put me in a room with people who I do not know. I'm not going to be the life of party. I'm not going to be like, hey. Right. I will find the oldest person in the room because that's my comfort zone and that's where I will remain the entire time and it's never my peer group. Some of my closest friends are 60 and up. Right. It's just a natural thing for me being raised with my grandmother. Mm -hmm. So we go over to this man and she says, yeah, she says again to him, hey, you know, yeah, Pastor, this is my friend Miracle. I used to go to her youth group back in Pittsburgh mm -hmm. and I later he steps back and he says, wait a minute, wait a minute. Miracle? Wait, 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 wait. Pittsburgh, mm -hmm. wait, 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 oh my gosh, oh my gosh. Petra, wait, wait, mm -hmm. your mom almost lost you at birth, right? And you started preaching when you were a little kid, like, wait, your miracle? Mm -hmm. And I'm looking like, I've never been in California, I know I've never met this man a day in my life. Right. He has me by about, I say 10 years. Right. So when you're 10 years old, you don't have friends that are 20. <laughs> um, <laughs> and so I'm like, I don't know right. him. No, I've never met him. And he said to me, you're not gonna believe this, but I carried memories of you in my heart for 15 to 20 years. He said, when I was in undergrad at Morehouse, there was my roommate mm -hmm. who was from Pittsburgh. Wow. And he said, my roommate, I think she, he's actually the son of um, Judge Sheryl Cray. Wow. Okay. And he said that he was my roommate, he was from Pittsburgh, and he would, we always, we thought he was like a little spooky spiritually, but he would come back to campus talking about this church in Pittsburgh, how they're doing this cutting edge stuff, and they're reaching the community, and they're going after the drug dealers, and he said, but the underlying story that he would tell me every time he'd come back, there's this little girl there, and she's a preacher, and people are like coming to hear her, like, and she's so small, and she's a kid, but she's legit a preacher, like right. on fire, and she's not joking, mm -hmm. and he said, I can't believe it, it's you. Mm -hmm. And I stood wow. there in the moment, all of my life, where the Lord, where God has said, where God, Grandma has said to me, you don't know who's watching you, mm -hmm. was that moment. Mm -hmm. That was one of many where I had no clue of his roommate, mm -hmm. clearly because we wouldn't have been friends because we're not peers. Mm -hmm. At that point, right now, things are different as you're an adult, you know, like I told you, my closest friends are in their 60s, right. so now age isn't really a thing, but when you're 10 or 12, it is. Mm -hmm. um, and in that moment, it was God showing me that 
It matters how you live. It matters how you yes. respond to the Lord. Yes. And people are watching you that you don't even know are watching you. So it right. matters. The consistency matters, right? And, and I believe that one of the threads of being consistent about what God tells you to do mm-hmm. is recognizing that your consistency in life will produce fruit. Yep. All of the time, over and over again, mm-hmm. it will produce fruit. Yep. Yeah. Absolutely. And I, I hope that even in her sharing that story that you understand and you know, as you mentioned, your story matters and that people are watching. Yes. And even on the smallest yes. level, yes. people are watching how you respond to Come other on. people, what you're commenting, what you're saying, what you're sharing. All of those things matter. The the sum of our lives are small decisions. Come on. Right? They're literally small decisions every single day. We have an opportunity and a choice to choose how we're connecting with people, what we're saying, how we're treating them, how we're handling them. So I hope that something that she shared really inspires you to own your story and to know that you matter and you're valuable and nobody can tell your story like you can. They, they just can't. And I hope that as you're going on your journey and you're moving forward, we're in a whole different season now, right? We're officially about to be in fall with it being in September, that you don't close out the year not knowing what your purpose is, not knowing what you're called to do. And we're not just talking about on a Christian level, you're calling in life, your purpose in life. If you don't know what that is yet, you still got a couple of months to figure that out. Now, yeah. I'm not putting no pressure on you <laughs> to have resolutions for 2024, but I'm just saying that you matter. As she yeah. mentioned, your story and how you're presenting yourself to people matter. Then a lot of us are sitting on gifts, we're sitting on talents, we're sitting on, like you said, books and stories and yeah. all kinds of stuff that haven't been seen through for one thing or another. So remove those obstacles out the way. Get to what it is that you should be doing, no matter what that is, whether it's a teacher, whether you volunteer, whether you want to help mothers, whether you, whatever it is, get to it. Don't hold off on it another day. So thank you so much for joining in. I see people on both Facebook and Instagram. You are greatly appreciated. Um, Even with just a small following, we're building up momentum, but the most important thing to me is purpose and it's substance and I believe that this has both of those things so if you haven't watched the whole thing please catch the replay I'm going to be watching the replay as I edit this because there's so many jewels that were dropped that were so impactful and could be imperative to me on seasons moving forward so thank you again for watching Beneath Your Beauty Um, we appreciate you being here how are viewers able to contact you? So I am on Instagram. I don't post as often, but I am on Instagram. I am Miss Miracle, and that is all the way spelled out. I am Miss Miracle, M-I-S-S. And then also on Facebook, you can find me at Miracle Read. There are two different pages. Um, I do uh, find myself active on both. I am a bit more, well, I can't say a bit more. I'm a whole lot more active. Um, on the Miracle Read private page that turned over to public figure. So you can find me on there. I'm on Word Weapon Wednesday, every Wednesday at 6.30 p.m. You can find me and the fire starters there. And I am also currently in 28 Days of Fire, where you can pull up on your girl for the next 20 days at 6 a.m. on my Facebook page. Awesome. So hopefully you get that. Once again, if you missed anything, Google is your best friend. Just Google Miracle Read. I'm pretty sure everything that you've done from publications to your yeah, authors, absolutely. you know, to book yep. to your nonprofit yep, that you have, yep. everything will be on there in one place. You may want to donate to the Bridge of Hope Global. You may want to connect with her ministry wise or just period. Absolutely. If you don't remember any of the uh, Instagram handles or Facebook or social media, just Google. It's the 21st century people. Okay. <laughs> I just had to put that out there because people are like, oh, I won't remember. Just make sure that you go ahead and Google. But thank you again so much. Love and appreciate you all. Watch the replay. There will be a lot of different snippets that I'm going to be putting out there so that you can be able to uh, connect on that way. So have a wonderful Saturday. Have-